not surprised. Uh, May 8th, 2019, May and San Bruno uh, Park School District Board of Education will now come to order. Uh, as our practice is we will be reported. And please, uh, please stand for the pledge of the To the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Ms. Delta? Here. Ms. Delta? Here. Here. Mr. Mason? Here. Here. And um, this evening, um, I'd like to take a moment um, to uh, acknowledge uh, the life of uh, Dr. John W. Neal, who is, um, and uh, offer a bit of um, information about him to, and his service to the um, San Bernardino Park School District and also to San Mateo County. Dr. John W. Neal, former San Bruno and San Mateo County Superintendent of Schools, passed away Sunday morning, May 4th, 2019. Dr. Mill was a lifelong educator whose dedicated efforts supported both local school districts and the San Mateo County Office of Education. Dr. Mill began his career with San Mateo County Public Schools in 1973 as the principal of Cabrillo Unified's Hatch Elementary School in Half Moon Bay. He held a variety of leadership positions in the Cabrillo Unified School District including interim superintendent. He later served as superintendent of the San Bruno Park School District. In 1991, Dr. Neal joined the County Office of Education as assistant superintendent of student services. In 2002, he was elected the San Mateo County Superintendent of Schools, a role he held until December 2005. So on behalf of the education community in San Bruno, we extend our heartfelt condolences to the Neal family, especially to John's wife, Marcia, who is a retired teacher from the Los Alamitas School District, and his daughter, Michelle Graham, who is here this evening. So at this time, I'd like to call for a moment of silence in honor of Dr. Neal. To the chair, I also want to include in that moment of silence for um, the tragedy that happened at the school shooting in Colorado. Sorry. 
um, also at the April 10th meeting, uh, the majority of the board requested to agendize board uh, governance reorganization under action, but it's not listed in this agenda so under we'll action. So I would like to request that we uh, appropriately uh, agendize it at, um, within the action. For so, their meeting. so discussion item to G1 would be G1 But that's not what was requested. Yeah. It will be. We, that's not it what will was be requested. Be we'll discuss it in a bit. But I'm asking to move it into action. It won't be. So, are you asking to move to this location? Well, why, why don't you want to Because it's not, it's not posted. It's posted for discussion. And we'll come okay, to it. Okay, but just to let. You know, um, Kevin, that that's not part of the request of the majority of the Okay, so on the agenda, do we have a motion? So moved to, with the corrective order for the agenda. I'll second that. Um, um, also, just make, uh, make a note, too, that um, for the members of the public, that uh, the public may provide comments agendize items during the discussion uh, of any item. And if you wish to speak regarding an item, please fill out a speaker card located on the back table and hand it to Superintendent Kemp or Lawrence, who will inform you when a speaker card has been received. And please note that each speaker is limited to three minutes, and you will be advised when you have 30 seconds left, and again when your time is up. And please try to keep your time off. Um, and one more thing, Kevin. Um, I'm sure the audience here is noticing that we have an extra person up at the table. If you can sure explain enough. who she is and introduce her to the community. Yes, I can introduce her. Um, yes, I can. I'm Gina Jaltrama, Deputy Counsel from the... Can you speak into the microphone? From the uh, San Diego County...
third, and fifth grade classes so that Hollingwood could avoid multiple combination classes. She was so successful that parents requested their kids be put in her class. This year, she's been instrumental in implementing PBIS. What makes a teacher so special is often best said in the words of their students. I'm going to read an excerpt from one of Amanda's students. Mrs. Coons is a nice and helpful teacher because whenever I need help on something, I would go and ask her. Then she would explain to me so that I could understand it better. Mrs. Coons has high expectations from me because I am one of the many leaders in her class. And if I don't act responsible like I should, then that means Mrs. to Mrs. Coons that I'm not acting like a leader. What I like about Mrs. Coons is a lot of things. Like she is fun and an enjoyable teacher in person because whenever I'm feeling down, she cheers me up. Or I'm not upset because she tells me things about me that makes me feel good as a person. Mrs. Coons, I could say, would probably be my favorite teacher because she inspires me and helps other people to believe in ourselves. And she is creative, smart, funny when she makes jokes, and she is very artistic. It is our honor to present the George Christovich Award to Amanda Coons. So anyway, we selected a, a, a student from Rolling Wood, Ms. Kayla Ahmed. We have superheroes for kindness and courtesy, superheroes for hard work and diligence, and superheroes for honest advisors. You know? All right. So she gets a certificate of achievement. Her school will get a $200 check for the uh, their art department. And she gets to ride in the car in the posing program. Oh. <laughs> You're quite welcome. We'll see you on June 2nd, won't we? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. I am uh, B3, give 
Tinker's Awards in Preschool. So Pilani and I, so Pilani and I are here this evening to recognize uh, two individuals from the preschool program. And uh, as we remember, uh, as we mentioned last month, the uh, Difference Maker Award uh, goes to individuals who demonstrate the district's core values. And uh, that includes uh, serving the whole child, supporting the holistic development of children, academic, physical, and social emotional, for teamwork and collaboration, for ethical behavior, respect, innovation, creativity, and accountability. And so this evening, uh, we're going to recognize two people from the preschool program, and we'd like to invite the first one forward is uh, Vicki Martinez. and unfortunately saw she passed away this year. <clears throat> um, and her presence in the preschool has really tremendously been missed. At Sashi's memorial, those of us who spoke in her honor all used the same word to describe Sashi, and that was unconditional. At any point, in any capacity, Sashi was here for us, covering breaks, lunches, absences, on a minute's notice, and I mean a minute's notice of preschool. Sashi never missed a birthday, a baby shower, or a bridal shower. In fact, when my daughter was going to India for a wedding, Sashi took control over my daughter's wardrobe. <laughs> she haggled with the clerk, and we received a $300 discount. She um, even wrangled some extra accessories to complete the outfits, the three outfits that she needed for the wedding. Sashi said, we need to properly attend the wedding in India. And as thoughtful as she was, and she even bought my daughter another sari so that she could wear it in India. <clears throat> as I said in my memorial, we will love you forever. We will like you for always. And as long as we're living, our sashi will be. And I'd like to have the family come up 
and Sashi and receive Sashi's certificate. So just a um, little note on, on um, guidelines. The governing board does not map, uh, act on any matter that has not been agendized except under limited circumstances as permitted by law. It is the policy of the governing board to refer matters raised in this forum to staff for investigation and for action where appropriate. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. You will be advised when you have 30 seconds left. And again, when your time is up, please try to keep within your three minutes. And I have one card. So the one part I have is for uh, Karen Burr, that's PPA. That's great, thank you. Oh, board of trustees. Um, at the last uh, board meeting, April 24th, I brought to the board's attention um, SBA's concern about the classified management um, pay scale. While I understand there were some errors made, the board did adopt and approve one scale in August. And then again in November, different, not all of the scales were the same. Um, SBA is still concerned that there was a violation of the Brown Act as the board was not notified about, at a board meeting about those discrepancies. That being said, we did email um, President Martinez on Friday, May 3rd, to ask where we were with that process. Um, and I haven't heard back. So. Um, I'm here tonight to uh, request or ask um, clarification for the public and for myself on the process and when we might hear back about that. Thanks. Thank you. 
board, I'd like to take just a few moments on behalf of the Allen Elementary School PTA to formally request that the auditorium of the newly constructed Allen School be named in honor of our current principal, Kathleen Cosgrove. Oh,
Round one was held on April the 24th was a three part interview and included three sessions. The process was seen as last year. There was a writing exercise, a panel interview, and a role play activity. Each panel was facilitated by a senior administrator and included parents from both sites, teachers from both sites, classified staff, and an elementary principal. Following the interviews, each panelist individually ranked the candidates, and then each representative group came together and collectively ranked the applicants, discussing their thoughts, reviewing stakeholder input, and with the goal of forwarding it to the superintendent for the second round. Round two was a two-part interview, which included an interview with the cabinet and a classroom observation with a debrief to assess the feedback quality of the areas regarding classroom instruction. From this step, two top candidates were identified and reference checks were completed by the panelists for the finalists. An offers and points were extended. This evening, I'm, I'm pleased to announce my recommendation to the board for the following individuals. For Allen Elementary School, I am recommending Monique Salazar. Monique is currently serving as assistant principal at Parkside Intermediate. In the years that she has been at Parkside, the impact on the school's climate and culture has been positive. She has taken on responsibilities such as the school's professional development, testing coordination, instruction monitoring, and facilitating the school's relax. Prior to coming to San Bruno, she served as an instructional coach for many years in the San Ramon Valley Unified School District, a district known for its outstanding programs. While in San Ramon Valley, she developed and supported response to intervention protocols, led literacy program development, supported teachers to implement various programs, including readers and writers workshops. Overall, two strengths in her is in supporting staff to grow and develop and in working with schools and families around the first student populations. Her enthusiasm is contagious and her work with students and she's demonstrated over the past year that she's committed to the success of San Bruno students. The second uh, appointment that I'm recommending this evening is John Muir Elementary School. I am recommending Michelle Mel Graham. Michelle comes from an education family with roots in San Mateo and San Bruno. Michelle served as an elementary teacher in the San Mateo Foster State School District, and most recently serving as assistant principal at the Beaver Lutheran School in Redwood City. As assistant principal in the private school, her responsibilities are those of the school principal and public school district. She has launched she has experience in launching STEM programs, special education programming, and education technology. When I call to speak to Michelle's references, I was told by those on and off her references that it is a privilege to work with her. She's a very strong instructional leader. She supports teachers by coaching and helping them to develop skills to serve all students, and is particularly known for supporting teachers with inclusion needs of special education students. I'd like the two candidates to please stand up. Have the name 
phrase included in the board packet that is not a requirement? Still can't hear it. Can you hear me now? Okay. How about now? I'm trying to use my lawyer voice. I said it may be standard to include it in the board packet, but it's not a requirement. Well, with all due respect with our attorney here, that's not my com that's not what was um, shared with me today in my conversation with um, one of the senior policy consultants with the CSBA. So I'm, 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 I'm where I, I would say that we continue with the item. Of course you board has, the board has objection and we can, we can vote to move forward differently on the, well first off, let's, let's take it this way. This, I, I say there's a, um, on the point of order that we'll continue with the item as we're saying. Is there anything from the board otherwise um, would object to that? Okay, then we have a motion and a second. Um, do you have any other? I think I have some comments. Sure. Thank you. Um, I know there's been some back and forth with staff regarding the, the beetles up here. Um, as far as back and forth about details around this item, um, it's something personal to candidates that are here this evening. Uh, I just want to reflect that. I also have the youngest kids in the district of all my colleagues up here, and I am a dominant parent. So, given that, I, I'm probably going to abstain from the vote on this. I think it's almost too close to it's too personal. But uh, thank you. Two out of our six schools, which is one third of our district, is going through a pretty large change um, from new principals. I feel that this is a, an important decision and should not be taken lightly. I feel that I cannot make an informed decision tonight since I was not provided any information prior to the board meeting. I have requested information, but I have not received any until right now. It is my understanding from a previous board member that previous principal appointments were communicated to the board prior to the meeting, such as Dr. Cross, Ms. Dees, Ms. Hennessy, and others, several others. My decision tonight has no bearing on whether I think these two individuals are, that were just announced are qualified or a good fit for our district because I, I had no information provided to me. Tonight I will abstain from voting on this item and, and if it is tabled to the next meeting, I will be able to make an informed decision. Um, one thing I know that that's not true, that we have not had many times. I recall one principal coming into closed session in the time. Yeah. I, I wasn't on the board when any, any principals were, were appointed, but I, I, I think I'm talking about um, the information being provided, whether it was in a board packet or whether it was in the weekend confidential communication to the board. My understanding from a previous board member was that there was never a time when principals were appointed without the board finding out during the meeting. Uh, uh, do you have another opinion? I don't believe that's true. No, that's not true. In fact, Dr. Cox, I have a colleague that if you want to be accurate, um, we have had Don Smith came in to prior to, but Don Smith's name, I believe, was in the board packet. We've had all former principals and all staff that is going was going to be hired and some sort of information within the agenda. So their so their names were out in the ballot. I do know that. Um, in reading the um, Q and A between board members and the superintendent, um, sounds like Terry's request went um, uh, just her, her her questions went unanswered. So um, you know how I feel about that. How board members ask for information and it falls upon deaf ears. So um, so no, we have had information of staff who were about to get hired at meetings included. Yeah. Their names were included and then you may want to do your research. Yeah, I, I do. I know I know that.
you hear me there? In the background? All right, thumbs up. I think that the, uh, whether you got the names or not, in terms of the information that's presented tonight, and the vetting process was exhaustive and went through many stages. If we as a board is not responsible to do that, that's why we have hired a superintendent and a staff and community to vet these candidates. And looking at the short summaries involving the qualifications, I think they meet more than the standards that you're expecting. This is a, just a delay because we want to get these principals on board in order to make the transition smooth so they can meet the parents. Oh, there's open houses coming up soon in May, and this is a critical time of transition. Delaying is not solving any issue. It's about children and the families the community deserve this. To, to delay this any further is irresponsible on the board. Do the chair want to uh, answer some of the things that Henry just mentioned? You did say many stages that we did follow through some many stages. Well, let me tell you about the many stages. Uh, it was brought to my attention that with the folks that were on these panels, at the end of the day, the superintendent made comments that it pretty much disregarded their level of feedback and input that she was the superintendent and she was going to make the final decision. So regarding input from parents and different stakeholders in the community, during, um, through, going through this many stages, it fell upon deaf ears once again. And then you said that you feel that this is um, irresponsible on the board. You know, I think that we're we're um, doing a due diligence in making sure that um, that we have all the necessary information. Um, I would have preferred as well. I I I, uh, I share um, Terry's uh, concerns. How we didn't have enough information prior to tonight's meeting. I appreciate that we were given the resumes. But with previous superintendents, when we would go through this process, we would have more time to uh, look through, um, you know, at least kind of state uh, uh, resumes prior. But the fact that yes, we did. Yes, that was the superintendent. And yes, she was hired for a district. But I think it would be. Um, I just think that she needs to answer uh, board members' questions and concerns prior to board meetings. I think it's more of an issue that, uh, for me, and seeing the questions that were asked of the superintendent in terms of before this meeting, that they'd be coming to the board, we could read it, whether it's closed or open, to make the decision. It's pretty straightforward when you read this and then what was explained. Uh, I think people leaking out information during the process to board members is not appropriate because it sends independent that if you weren't there or anybody else except these meetings and so they can frame it any way they want and I think that's it's a confidential process of the interview and confidentiality is part of the board norms that we all signed on as governance and look, everyone on this uh, board so I think if you've got that type of information, I would take it with a grain of salt and not have an issue in terms of preventing the ability to pass this tonight. Through the chair, um, I just want to make sure you understand this time that um, when, I'm going to be clear and clarify any misunderstandings, any misunderstandings you may have with what I've said um, previously. Um, there was no leak of information on who the candidates were. So, um, just want to clarify that. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I wanted to reiterate that same sentiment. I, I had no idea who was going to be appointed tonight. That's why I only asked um, Dr. Kent and, um, and, and President uh, Martinez a couple of times if they had any information regarding um, who the candidates were or who the, who the um, appointments were. And, and so that, I just wanted to make that statement that, I, that nothing was leaked up to myself. Point I'd like is that with the information we have, we are not hiring managers for the district. And the governing board that looks to you um, the processes in place to ensure that the district um, applies them fairly. We're not 
qualify to um, that the candidates and their their qualities as educational leaders, which comes through in the um, well within the hiring process, including um, the role that the superintendent has as the education leader for the district. Chairman, um, I understand what you're saying. Then why, why does the board need to approve the appointment? We approve, we approve HR matters. We don't hire. We hire one new person. Who's the right person? Use the mic. I, what I meant is that the, the board does not hire. We approve um, the application of those processes. The board's one employee is the superintendent. So I think so I think we'll wrap this. I, I believe just knowing from, from what the, the comments around here that perhaps it should move forward then to the next meeting. Good idea. And I've also done yeah. although I um, I think there was I, I do see that we just saw that. Request for comment on this, and it's um, shall be selected to the board. Is it correct, I, Michelle Laker from the John Deere Parent? Is it correct that the same table would hold the next board meeting? That's not the board members. Okay, thank you. We really appreciate that, and John Ward, your parents, that oversight is done for the principal who works so hard to serve our children and our family. Um, and I think it's only fair that if you guys have to look into this, then you have the information to be able to make an informed decision. So thank you very much.
read to us. We've had a dentist come in and do all about the hygiene. We had eagles, is it? <laughs> we had the Eagle Scouts helpers come up and answer classroom. For his project, he created um, the pretend burners, and that is a real sink. They can put their uh, toys and wash their babies and whatnot. We also have yoga with Guru Lorraine. And that was thank you to the Welch Foundation for that. They help support our support our our yoga. We do that twice a month. This is a picture of the field trip. Look at that. There's Officer Ledesma, and who also reads to us. Um, and somebody sitting on a motorcycle. Here's our touch a truck with our uh, our future preschool student that happens to be my grandson. He's so cute. <laughs> We had plenty, I mean the kids just went crazy. So they, they loved it. We um, had seven staff members participate in the Dual Language Institute. And this isn't a really good picture, but it's of teacher Regina. And she was honored to speak at the um, Institute for everybody because of everything she does in her classroom. She, also, she spoke to us in, in Spanish and had the translator translated in English. So a little bit about Regina and Hina. Regina's relationship with her family exemplifies the type of partnership we encourage with all teachers to foster the families and children in the classroom. It was wonderful to see Regina share her experiences with her families in her home language of Spanish from the DLL Institute. As she confidently stepped into the front of 40 of her peers and colleagues, and share the story behind the mole recipe book. The mole recipe book was a, uh, a book made out of brown bags from shopping from Lucky's. And she put it all together, the handles you could carry the book, and it was how to make the mole. From the chocolate, a real piece of chocolate, to the tortilla chips, to the bread, everything was in there. It was amazing. We are grateful, all grateful to have Regina as a teacher and a leader at Bel Air Preschool, making sure every child and their family is engaged in meaningful ways um, at their school days. Um, I, um, San Bernardino Park School District, San Mateo County Office of Ed, Pacifica, Cabrillo, Jefferson School District, and IHSP. We all formed a family engagement team. We meet every, once a month, and um, we want to explore more activities and create fun and interactive strategies to use with, with these families family get-togethers that we have in order to stimulate the natural beginning of the year, the energy of the family, to motivate and inspire, and to continue engagement in our uh, program throughout the school year. And we're all of us right there in the Bel Air Library. Okay, Big Lift and Bliss. Um, Big Lift Inspiring Summers. Last year at graduation, they brought a petting zoo out, and all the kids got to go to the petting zoo. It was small, it didn't last very long, so this year they're gonna make it grand, a little bit bigger, and it's gonna last the whole day. As the board is aware, we live in one of the wealthiest counties, bad count, counties in the nation, but 50% of the children are not reading proficiently by third grade. When looking specifically at Latino, African American, and Pacific Islanders, third, grade, third graders in the county, this number rises. 37, 73%. The district is one of only a handful of the county to receive big lift grant funding three years ago, upwards over $1 million to date, to address early literacy in our diverse district community. I want to highlight several accomplishments. The district's big lift process reports that, Nan sorry, Nancy prepares these reports that give them the big lift. And she's been recognized as a model um, in her reports. So they, they use them as examples of how well our reports have been written. Um, and also, um, it helps put attract, attract potential um, investors. We are embarking on our third inspiring summer's experience, which is greatly enhanced by having district teachers engaged in the program. Data from the previous summers indicate that our school scholars have had an 88% attendance rate and a 1.5 average reading gain in months. That's wonderful. Importantly, 88% of the families report increased involvement in their child's attendance 
and the teachers report 100% improvement in the scholars' self-confidence. This year is our third Big Lift Inspiring Program, and we will be assessed and given the opportunity to become certified. Where the process won't, there won't be as much uh, trainings and uh, certain steps that we have to go through. We'll be on our own, and we've proven that um, that we can do it. The Big Lift Collaborative. Ooh, that thing is not very good. Okay. <sighs> with gratitude from, from super, with guidance from Superintendent Dr. Kemp, we've expanded the district's Big Lift Early Literacy Collaborative to include representatives from the city, county agencies, Silicon Valley Community Foundation, and the San Bruno Community. And educational leaders to help the district chart a course for future, for our future in preparing the San Bruno children to become proficient. Uh, readers by third grade. The collaborative is also discussing the recent report, mapping and planning for child care and preschool in the community, which was prepared by San Mateo First Five and build up San Mateo for San Mateo County's children, a study that was funded um, part by San Bruno Community Foundation. The goal of our expanded collaborative is sustainability and the momentum we have created with the Big Lift Grant funding by building a network of integrated systems around the early childhood education that are aligned with high quality standards and sustain the work that we have already accomplished. We have uh, created three subgroups within the collaborative and the, the um, action plan will be around funding, PK for three alignment, public awareness around early literacy, and the need for more child care spaces in San Bruno. At the end of May, the collaborative will reconvene and integrate the subgroup actions into a presentation that will be presented to the board at a later date. And lastly, um, I went to a training for uh, early learning uh, administrators. And at that training, I realized that it was, it wasn't balanced, there was something missing. So Jefferson School District, South San Francisco School District, as well as San Bruno Park School District decided to form a kindergarten pilot for the first ones to do this. And we want to, we want to work together from pre-K to TK to K to first to second to third. Um, so we want to make sure that our students are ready for kindergarten and they can make a successful transition between the two systems. Currently, we are working with pre-K, K, and TK. And we have a teacher that represents each of those different um, grade levels. Um, the, the goals of pre-K, TK, and K teachers across the district will demonstrate an understanding of the ELA, ELD standards, assessments, and curriculum in the grade above and or below. TQ will be familiar with pre-K, pre-K, K, K will be familiar with TK. And pre-K and <laughs> pre-K will understand TK and K. Lots of K's there. Sorry. Develop and adopt a biological awareness developmental continuum, scope and sequence from pre-K to K. Identify, the identify and implement aligned research-based instructional practices in preschool, TK, K, and classrooms at three sites, Bel Air, Rollingwood, and John Muir. I mean, Bel Air, Rollingwood, and I think it should be, oh, John Muir, okay, I'm right. Pre-K students will experience a smooth and supportive transition to kinder. I want to recognize the team that we have. It's amazing. Um, I have Dr. Valerie Rogers, Carrie Dees, the principal, Colleen Hennessy, the other principal, Maria, Marissa Giovacini, a kindergarten teacher, Marjorie Felix, a pre-K teacher, Claudia Gazelle, a TK teacher, Pat Sasso, our preschool coach, Christine Thorstensen, 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 right? <laughs> okay, um, early education manager, uh, for the Center of Early Learning um, and San Mateo County Office of Ed, and Cheryl Chan, who's our state preschool manager. This is an amazing team. We've worked really hard. We've, we've come to a common language. We've done cross-grade collaboration. Marissa has come and visited us. Pat is working with both K and, and pre-K so that we can have that warm handshake, warm give off for the, for the next grade above us. And, I'm glad to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yoga. <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, for the chair, has some questions. Oh, okay. So, boy, I see that you mentioned you have Pat Sasso up there. Is she there representing Mason the Reader? Is she, she Pat Sasso? Sasso retired. She retired. She retired from Mason the Reader, Reader and she became a coach uh, through Cemetery of County Alps and Death. Okay. And she okay, could she's just stay. Nice, nice. Yeah. I would like to remember her shirt. Sure, sure. um, and also, I wanted to mention, um, I don't think Medina, Teacher Medina, was here when you were speaking about her. But oh, no. She told yeah, she me. walked in after your, after, you, after yes. I told her what I was going to do. Oh, well, that's why. But um, no, I just, uh, we're very fortunate to have Teacher Hina and all of our wonderful, amazing preschool teachers. I remember Hina when my children were at Bel Air and she was just a parent um, and uh, preschool, you know, was a, it just has a special place in her heart and she went through school and, and then her raising Diego, I mean, she's, She's all that. Yes, she is. So, hi, hi. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad we have access. So, awesome. And I just want to say, I, I have to give a shout out to my staff. They're amazing. You know, they, they some of them went to an institute and Friday, Thursday evening, Friday day, and Saturday. They took the time to do that. They continue professional development. Anything I throw at them, they're like, okay, come on, Pony, let's do it now. So I just want to thank you.
we had 48 students. At one point, we were up to 175. We're now at about 130, 140. So we eliminated a lot of our part-day preschool classrooms and are now offering full day, which is what our community needs. Fantastic. Yeah. What, what I witnessed in Millbrae, near the library, Millbrae Library, they actually have a big building they built that's been funded by Measure K dollars. I'm curious, San Bruno's been a little shy about asking for money, but is there an opportunity to work with Measure K dollars or other I'm not services? shy. <laughs> well, we I, it's a, it's an idea that comes out like, <laughs> you know, they, they want to keep me down, but I, am, I, I put my hand up for everything that we can get. Good. And like I said, San Mateo County Office of Ed is just amazing and helps help to support us um, in doing this work. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you, and thank you for your support. Thanks. And I'll give you Thank you, um, item C2, uh, presentation school with tomorrow inside, facilities transformation. regarding uh, the timeline set uh, that I'll talk about. That's not my presentation. No, so it's true. I can't get this slide to close. So um, I wanted to just uh, inform the board that this update is coming to you as it was a request from the Rollingwood uh, community and families that were here back in April. And um, Prior to uh, developing the presentation, I did meet with the Rollingwood PTA board on April the 25th. So the purpose of my presentation this evening is to share with the board the timelines and subsequent activities that have been going on regarding the schools of Toronto site, focusing only on the facilities and fiscal, um, the fiscal updates that we've been working on. So we just, there we go. So in September 2017, uh, we launched the planning and preparation phase for the Schools with Tomorrow on site, focusing on two areas, and that, that was the fiscal recovery and the facilities modernization updates. So uh, the fiscal recovery plan, as you remember, was, uh, was a plan that was really around the, the fiscal enhancement of the school district, right-sizing the district's budget, and then focusing on the school consolidation. And so in the presentation this evening, I've color-coded the fiscal recovery in blue and the facilities and modernization in uh, green. So in October 2017, we had the 7-11 committee, uh, those appointments, the committee began to met to meet. We also launched our facilities visioning uh, committee. We need to really think about what is it that we want for 21st century uh, classrooms in our school district. And so then in December, I, um, I went to the, the schools that were considered uh, for part of the consolidation, so Crystal and Rollingwood, and met with, uh, with the uh, families to explain, and I had Wendy Allman who was the chairperson of the 7-Eleven um, committee there as well, to, to share uh, kind of what was going on. And so then in, uh, in January, I met with the uh, Rollingwood PTA board uh, on the 17th of January, 2018. And in February, then we had a facilities, a facilities tour with the board members and visited all of the school sites. And at the same time, around that month, we had our facilities vision report brought to the board for adoption. Uh, February was a busy month because that was also the same month that the 7-Eleven committee made the recommendations. Uh, for uh, the consolidation, and we moved forward with the uh, recommendations on the Elk Crystal transition that was launched in February. So most of last spring was really focused on um, on uh, a, a couple of things. It was really around um, the closure of Elk Crystal, but also the preparation for a bond measure. And so we were beginning to, to work on that. So we had our facilities plan, a vision plan in place. We're beginning to work that and in the consolidation of Oak Crystal. Then uh, in July, the board passed the resolution, so getting back into the, into the facilities modernization, uh, to move forward with the general obligation bond measure, 
for the November uh, November ballot. And then along while this was all happening, uh, we were working with our property manager and we had the RFPs out there for the request for proposals on the El Crystal property because the, the board made a decision to move forward with the with the sale of that property. So in November again we had the, the successful uh, manager uh, X passage and when then we began the work really on the uh, planning for the preparation of the first projects in the bond measure. And so the RFP queues were sent out for architect, construction manager, program manager. And we also began working on the preparation for the bond sales because there was significant amount of work behind the scenes to prepare the district to move forward to uh, have those bonds go on the market uh, and, and issued to the uh, public for sale. At the same time, uh, we entered into, uh, the board entered into an authorization uh, to uh, sell the El Crystal property. Uh, and then we also had, uh, in terms of the fiscal recovery, we did a lease amendment to the VB Golf for the Ingwall property. So, um, so now we go into, into kind of this year. So what has happened since January? So as you know, we have had our RFPQ, the architect, construction manager, program manager have all now been been uh, approved. We're finishing up the contract with the architect, which will be coming back to the board in, in, in a subsequent meeting. Uh, we have um, had a study session on the Ingwall property, and we had our uh, bond, our credit rating was upgraded by Moody's, and we uh, had the first series of the bonds were sold in February, into February. At the same time, we've also had the appointment of the Citizens Oversight Committee for the bond measure, and they had their first meeting in March 2019. And uh, just to remind you, uh, the board that the uh, citizens oversight committees are open meetings and these are uh, publicly noticed now on the district's website. So uh, for those who want to follow that, those are those are listed, and we're working on a calendar so that those will be formally uh, posted there for future meeting dates. So then in April, now we're getting to so we have our construction manager in place, we have our um, uh, uh, program manager in place, and we have now. And uh, getting ready to bring in forward to the board an architect for the first project, the Allen project. And, um, and so we have some things now, so that we've got all the pieces in place. We haven't really moved forward uh, too much uh, in terms of the facilities because we're trying to get everyone on board. So May 2019 is really kind of like where things are going to start to spool up a little bit more. So in May 2019, we're, gonna, we're going to have uh, on the 11th of May, uh, and a board, uh, special board meeting, a study session. We're going to go out to the Ewald property and tour it and then come back and have a debriefing. Um, and then we'll give direction and determination of what we're going to do regarding the RFP for that property. There's no decision been made, but the board has seen the different options and we'll enter into discussion uh, uh, on the weekend when we have the board meeting. Uh, and we would like to bring back on uh, May the 27th the architect for the um, for the Allen Elementary. And so once those all those individuals are in place, then we can begin really beginning the planning. And so the items from May 2019 until December 2021 are really estimates. So based on the previous work, the estimated way that funds will have to become available for construction and so on. We're estimating that beginning in May 2019, we'll start increment one, which will be an Allen School Design going to DSA. We'll come back in spring, summer 2020. We'll do this next sale of the bonds. And then between June 2020 and December 2021, will be increment two, which is really around the Allen construction. And there is a lot of things that will happen in there. One of the things that uh, we have committed, our program managers committed to is that there will be monthly updates to the board once we start moving with this. But right now, we're in a holding pattern until an architect comes on board. One of the things I want to point out to the board is that December 2021 is the expiration of the early termination option for the annual property lease. And this gets back really to that fiscal recovery. So when we're thinking about the kinds of things that have to happen here in the district as we project forward a couple of years, I just want to keep in mind some things that are still kind of pending out there. So the Elk Crystal property, which is, uh, we're hoping the final transfer of ownership will happen around October 
2016. They're in the process now of working with the city. So that's the first one. The Ingle property, we really need to make a decision this spring regarding what the board's decision is regarding uh, the property, what they would like to do. Then we have the Allen design phase. We'll need the architect and the program manager to go back and look at the master plan and review and update that. There might be some changes necessary. I don't know what those are, but it could be possible. And then I think one of the biggest things is we need to take a look at our enrollment trends. So as you look at our district, this last year we had a 5.4% decrease in enrollment across the district. And that and all those enrollment trends are, are a little scary because all the school districts in California are experiencing enrollment declines. And so those enrollment declines uh, certainly impact uh, many things, particularly as we're looking at how the governor might be funding the schools and the K-12 education program in California, which could move us out of basic aid and back into, uh, into the revenue limit. So those, those things you have to keep in mind, you have to keep an eye on that, and that's what uh, Wendy is doing as she is uh, getting information from, uh, from the state and from the county. So when we think about the rolling wood consolidation and the date for that, so when I met with the, with the folks back in, um, in January 2018, you know, they, they wanted to pinpoint, you know, we were like, when's it gonna happen? Well, the 7-Eleven committee was very clear in what they wrote. The recommendation was to close Rollingwood as of June 30th, 2020, subject to the completion of phase one. Um, the meetings with the site included, I, again, I mentioned uh, Wendy Al McDodd, and there was a question, well, is it gonna close, well, what, what if phase one isn't done in, in 2020? You know, what if it takes longer? And this gets really to the second part of this, and that's about the fiscal, the fiscal prudency of the district, is that we have to remember that if we have declining enrollment, and we have classrooms that are, are you know, multiple classrooms that are um, multi-grade combination classes, and we have um, we flip out of out of the revenue uh, out of the community funded into revenue limit. Those decisions to the board will be presented at the time when we need to make those decisions. And so, when I met with the Rollingwood community uh, here in April, I shared with them that you know we are monitoring monitoring the enrollment. We're monitoring whether we can house students if we do that. And so we're beginning to test the waters to see what will happen in September, in August, September this year, to say, okay, well, if we had done it, would we be able to house the students? And what are the implications of that? Because the closing of the second school will have determination regarding boundary changes, so that will have an impact. We'll have to look at, do we have enough classrooms where we're currently, uh, we're currently housing students? Do we need to add a portable here or there while we're finishing up the construction? What's the cost benefit on that? It's going to cost us more money to put affordable in for three years versus keeping the school open and so on. So the team is looking at all of those different factors as they're trying to make a decision about what to do. And this time, you know, we, we don't have a date for Rollingwood because we don't know what the numbers look like. And that's what I emphasized to the community when I visited with them is that we need to watch those things and keep an eye on them. Then one of the big concerns, so when we think about um, the consolidation of a school is when do you announce that? And so I think it's important to realize is that, you know, while the El Crystal was announced in February, it's important for us to keep in mind that there may need to be a longer transition time for this. And so, you know, I, I would recommend that the, that the board take a look at this in late fall next year and make a decision whether or not we want to wait another year or go now. And, uh, and then begin to give direction to the superintendent to move forward with that. But we'll be giving uh, data to the board so that the informed decision can be made regarding whether this is something that the board would like to do. So I want to just go back to the two points. So one was the fiscal recovery. So when we went to the voters and, and when we started this process last in summer of 2017, there was, uh, information to the board that we need to utilize the surplus property that we have on hand. And one was El Crystal, which was already been, has already been um, uh, put up for sale, and we have a contract on that. And one was involved taking care of the lease or doing something there, looking at Hesselbrin, the district office, and then looking at Rollingwood and making a decision about what the board wants to do with Rollingwood. And so there are many decisions that have to be made over the next couple of years, but all with the idea of let's make sure the district is in a sound financial situation, with a strong fund balance, particularly as a community-funded school district, those are the challenges that you want to make sure you have there. And when and when you're thinking about consolidation of Rollingwood, taking taking into matter 
the enrollment numbers, what the trends are looking like, determining our housing needs, can we house the students, what does that look like for the teachers as well, we don't want to divide families up, and then really think about the boundary changes because that is going to be something that significantly impacts the community and will require a lot of work in order to make that happen. And then the last piece is really thinking about the facilities and the modernization. So hot on the table right now is the construction of Allen, and so that's you know, where we're starting down this path. We need to update the master plan and think about the phasing of this. We need to look at raising capital to do the remaining campuses and figure out where is the district office going to go. So one other uh, item that has come up is really around communication. And I want to um, just uh, share a little bit with the board regarding our communication strategy to the community. So the quarterly report to the community uh, is mailed to each San Bruno household and uh, in, here in San Bruno. So those include information since the passage of Measure X, does include information regarding that. We do post information on social media. They have a superintendent's update that goes out to staff and parents. It's done through our uh, constant contact and it's done through the email addresses. Uh, beginning with this board meeting, we, uh, as I shared with the board, is the board meeting debrief. Uh, it'll be a, a little one-page uh, summary that we post to the website and email to parents and staff, so they'll have uh, access to uh, see what the decisions were that were made by the board. And then for the Rollingwood community in particular, given that they're, they're uh, uh, you know, they would like more information, so I've had uh, a met with the principal, and we've talked about supporting communication to the PTA board the principal so before every PTA board meeting she will come in with Wendy or I to talk about okay, what's going on, what can I update them about, and then she will also share the updates of the other communications that have gone out through the school newsletter so that parents can look for those things in their inbox and, and have those available. And that is my presentation this evening. Plenty of questions. Um, thanks to staff for providing the report. Um, essentially, when I asked staff about the report, it wasn't ready, correct? Uh, Friday evening. Um, I had questions then. In fact, when the report came out, I even had more questions. Um, I'm just going to repeat them for the public record. Um, let's see here. So you mentioned on page five of RFP for Ingvall, in terms of drafting a new lease agreement for the Ingvall site, what sort of lease is staff considering for the site? Um, and this could foster a spirit of discussion amongst the board. Can you please provide some background on this? Yes, I can. So um, we have a board meeting scheduled, a special board meeting scheduled for May the 11th. And at that meeting, uh, we're going to talk about what kind of, like, what's the board's will on that. And it's based on the study session that happened a couple of months ago with the board. So staff doesn't consider anything. This is basically the board giving direction to the staff to prepare an RFP, to put out and see what comes back. It's, it's like we're casting the, the net to see what we get. So the board will provide direction to the superintendent and to staff uh, regarding what the RFP will look like. Uh, what are the acreage in that, and then that will then uh, be developed and brought back to the board, uh, be developed by our property uh, consultant. So staff's going to do the work of drafting an RFP long before the decision comes from the board, or the other way around? No, so the board is going to provide direction to the superintendent on the next steps at the May 11th board meeting. Following that board meeting, our consultant, Tom Shannon, will provide, will develop an RFP that will be released and interested parties will present plans to the board just like we did for the El Crystal property. Fantastic. Um, I think that as uh, previous meetings we talked about uh, being involved in order so Crestmore Canyon is a highly sensitive ecological area. We need to be really mindful of how our development of that site is going to affect the, the southern end of Crestmore Canyon. Um, when you mentioned on page seven consolidation of Bollingwood, I know there was a, a uh, January parents information night when staff promised the, the parents of the Bollingwood community that the school would close for three to five years. Are, are we planning on honoring that commitment? So when I met with the families in January 2018, 
what we said to them is, if nothing changes, we don't know, it could be three or five years, we don't know what it's going to be. So there was no timeline given other than that. The 7-Eleven Committee is recommending the closure at the end of 2020, and that we don't know based on what the construction is going to look like, whether we're going to be able to house the students. The factor that has happened now is the declining enrollment. The declining enrollment is the added piece to this, because with a 5.4% declining enrollment, if that happens again, that would be 10.8% over two years declining enrollment in the district, which is significant. And to follow up to that, you yeah, go ahead. This is a time So to the chair, to just make one statement. Um, I was, uh, I had the privilege of being part of the Senate 11 Advisory Committee. I was one of the 11 committee members. So I just wanted to mention and just provide clarity that staff, staff had provided us with the dates that we need to uh, select two schools. You know, we spent about 10 months going through this process. It was very lengthy, it was very, it was a very robust process. I do agree that we only need four elementary schools given our enrollment. I just wanted to make a comment because um, I think I've heard that the Senate Elementary Committee um, came up with, the Senate Elementary Committee decided June 2020, but actually staff told us to um, uh, have to, you know, conduct our meetings, do our investigation, um, and choose a selective school for closure for June 2018, and select a school for closure for June 2020. So I just wanted to provide that clarity. Thanks. So the board ultimately made the decision regarding consolidation. So that was a recommendation to the board from the 7-Eleven Committee, and there are a number of factors that go into consideration when you decide to consolidate a school. As I mentioned, can you house the students that are currently enrolled there? Uh, what is the boundary changes going to look like? So in terms of what's the impact of the boundary changes? And so those are two big things and what are the future trends rate for the enrollment? Thank you. And thanks again for providing the 5.4% decline, decline enrollment. Um, I've been very strong-willed in my opinions about this, so I think we should go slow and steady with our uh, consolidation efforts. Um, I'm hearing from a lot of John Muir parents about the Elk Ridge School parents coming in and we're kind of a full school. I think we, we do need to plan for growth. Mills Park's um, coming up as a, a higher, higher density, um, five-story building. There's going to be additional uh, students, so we need to be thoughtful, plan, think long and hard about this as trustees. We also need to look at El Crystal, which is, you know, thanks again for the information. So October is when that's going to close, correct? So October 2019 is when we're expected to transfer title. Okay. So again, we're going to have to follow up, and this is a transparency issue, around the money for El Crystal. Uh, we're also going to have to look at, as, as we close that deal, we're going to have to make sure that we, we build classrooms in time to meet the needs. And, and also, I would also second to my colleagues up here is that this is actually a question for staff. Is there is a subcommittee with the city council that was previously to discuss land use, to discuss property issues, to discuss shared initiatives between the city and the school board. Would staff set up those meetings and are those in the works to be set up? Yes, I actually have a meeting with Javon, and we're talking about how we're going to structure those things. Fantastic. Yes. I really look forward to, to participating in that. Thanks. Uh, Trustee Nason, if I could interject here, I wanted to, I wanted to just comment that uh, you did bring up a good point about the Mills um, the large apartment complex. So on the Senate Limited Advisory Committee, we actually, they actually forecasted the number of students that would result from the different, from the various apartments that were being built. So we took that into consideration and we found that we, we do, um, at this moment, with the current enrollment, even the enrollment trends that, that they're projecting, um, that we do only need four elementary schools. But I, but I do um, share your concern with how fast that the schools will close. I mean, the second school and just the fact of uh, make, making sure that we can house the students from the second school is going to be uh, But I did want to make that comment that there, the apartment building does look large, but there was thought put behind that, and there was uh, they forecasted the number of students in the next 10 years, I think. Yeah, so we use a software called Decision Insight. They're a demographer uh, working with many school districts here in California, and so they looked at all of the uh, proposed developments in San Bruno and estimated from those developments what the student population would look like coming out of them. And so we use that 
to project our planning for enrollment for each year. And so this is the first year we've actually like had the students in from a new development into our enrollment projections. We're expecting four students from the from one that's open now. Yeah. So thanks to the staff again for the presentation. I notice within the, the agenda topics, it's an information item. Yes. But under recommendation, it asks the board recommend that we approve of staff's information packet, correct? It's acceptance of the information. It's item. acceptance. So yes. it's not so much acceptance of the content, it's more it's accepting that it exists, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I think in terms of the, as you mentioned earlier, that the population in California is declining in terms of people coming in because of the expense in Northern Southern California. But I think the decline in enrollment, despite the apartment construction, is being minimal and being counteracted by the expense. Because there's people living, leaving now that even though if you have an optimal projection of enrollment because of the construction, the number of people are leaving faster than uh, the construction and the anticipation because people are ready to have families later in life. And so you can see that from Google, for example, people being bused in and leaving. And so they're living in the city, it's much more expensive. And so the ability to have a house or the ideal American dream is a lot less today than 30, 40, 50 years ago. So I would predict the decline is going to be steady. Speech, but I do want to make a few comments. Um, the the enrollment, the um, forecasting of enrollment. I, I want to slightly disagree with what Henry said. The the enrollment, I think, in the Bay Area. The whole Bay Area is a volatile area, and right now there's several initiatives to build housing, multi-family, dense, high-density housing. And I brought this up before. I know you guys. I appreciate that you guys kind of educated me about uh, changing the zoning in certain areas, um, but I do think it's still a possibility. The way that we are um, approaching Stella's goals to re the, meet these, um, just these benchmarks, um, I do think we can still look into rezoning some areas rather than just um, selling property for single family homes. There was an article in the paper today from the uh, Mountain View Wisdom School District um, sounds like you're familiar with it. Uh, they, they are building high density housing and they're expecting an enrollment increase of 1,100 students. And so they're building a school now to accommodate that because they didn't expect that. Uh, but with those initiatives on housing in the Bay Area, that is going to become a reality. The state bills are being pushed through. I don't know if they're going to pass it or not, neither do you. Um, but just to not run into a situation where I think it was the San Carlos Belmont uh, School District sold all their property and then had to buy it back at a huge cost. Um, I just would reiterate what um, Andy said, like, can we just take a slow approach? We don't need to um, rush things, um, especially you know, in like, like, there's no space for all of the kids um, to be accommodated at one, any one school. It's not fair to rolling the students to not be given the same opportunities to move and mass like the Crestmore students did or the El Crystal students did. So I want you guys to really carefully consider the use of the property. Um, putting high density housing, I don't really know much about the watershed in, in the Ingle property, so um, I need to learn more about that. But like that that area, I don't I can't imagine San Bruno voters um, have being opposed to that if we built high density housing there, it doesn't obstruct the view there. Maybe it's a problem with the watershed, I don't know. But um, just if we could look at, my whole problem with this whole process was one that the 7-Eleven Committee was given old estimates for um, building or repairing or whatever the schools. Um, so I felt like uh, if they were going to make such a huge decision that impacts so many people, they should have been given brand new estimates, one. And secondly, I just felt like the community wasn't given an opportunity to think out of the box with other ideas. Um, I think many of you have heard of my other ideas. And if we could just give the community an opportunity, I know you're doing the 
May 11th, they, I'm not sure, so is that open to the public on May 11th? Okay, so um, I know you're doing that to look at the Ingle site, but there's lots of opportunities for us to come together and come up with other ideas other than um, closing any specific school so suddenly. So I would just like to ask you guys to look at those things. First, thank you to Trustee Blanco, to Trustee Salvish, Chavez, sorry, sorry, um, and the planning committee for walking with Margaret and Valerie for the super successful Children's Day. Early estimates indicate that we have over 800 attendees at this year's event. Thank you to the San Bruno Lions, Rotary, the Welsh Family Foundation, and the New Milan Bridge for supporting the event. Last week on Thursday afternoon, we held our annual staff appreciation event, and they started off our festivities with the first hopefully to the annual San Bruno Amazing Race. This was an amazing team building activity. Congratulations to the Rolando staff for winning the team spirit of their and Bella for placing first place in this year's race. All this would have not been possible for around for the generous donations of our vendors, community businesses, and the Rolando Family Foundation. The planning committee, Dr. Melody, Jennifer Thomas, Chris Carroll, Galen, and Bonnie were amazing, and your efforts are truly appreciated. I'd also like to thank the San Bruno firefighters for hosting the Firefighter of the Day event that was held on Saturday, April 27th, right before the Children's Day. The event is becoming more and more popular among our children in the community. Last month, we completed the enrollment in student lottery. Notifications went out to parents regarding the wait list. And I want to thank Sarah for an amazing process that was very clear, and, um, and, and she has a system in place now. I had a meeting with the Education Foundation regarding the grant proposals for 2019-2020. We attended the El Crystal Neighborhood meeting with Stratford School Representatives, and another meeting is scheduled to show that you need the proposed site changes. Stratford is planning to open the campus for operations beginning in the 2020-2021 school year. We had meetings with Abbott regarding our uh, partnership possibly at Parkside uh, Intermediate School. We attended the gate Saturday at Portola, and I want to remind everyone that this Saturday is our science fair. Uh, we had architect interviews, of course, visit classrooms with trustees to look at the uh, SIL program implementation of our classrooms. Um, we had a meeting with the director of the North uh, San Mateo County Board and Girls Club, and we'd like to expand our partnership to areas of our schools, our Title I schools. Um, I've worked with the Parkside principal to review the master schedule, and planning provided direction for him, and we'll be meeting with him on Friday to review his final proposal. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm a member of the Rolling with the EPA board. Uh, we had a monthly meeting with CSEA and SBEA. This uh, past week, we were recognized uh, as a Region 5 recipient uh, for AXA, the uh, Department of Education Award, and this was held over in San Francisco. I want to thank all of our partners and part of the music uh, program who were there. On Monday, we had our final three, third session of our School of Tomorrow Side Education Transformation efforts. For the graduate, and after much dialogue and conversation, the group settled on this afternoon that we inspired our students. The committee is planning to bring this to the board on May the 22nd to show this possible. Our teacher evaluation committee is meeting tomorrow, but last month we reviewed, uh, we met to look at the findings from Marine Valley, and this committee will, uh, will uh, discuss tomorrow uh, the plans for what we're going to do about next year. We've been acting and recruited several speaking positions and have interviews, offered folks many positions, and for this year, we have far fewer uh, openings across the district than past years. Um, and I just, and I mentioned also to you guys about the STEM Fair on Saturday. I want to thank the steering committee for that, Dr. Frost, Dr. Rogers, and Tennessee for coordinating this, and to our teachers who provided many hours of dedication to the event. And in closing, I'd like to wish all the moms at the table happy Mother's Day. Good evening, President Martinez, trustees, superintendent, 
With end of the year rapidly approaching and services is extremely busy. During the past month, we have continued our planning for next year's professional learning and staffing and instructional programs. We are solidifying our elementary music and PE programs for next year and conducting interviews for these positions. Big Lift, Seal Summer, Extended School Year, and Elevate Math programs are all fully staffed for the summer and enrollment is still coming in. Our elementary school social studies history adoption committee met this afternoon to finalize their recommendations for um, the from their pilot or the curriculum pilot. We've completed inventory and curriculum materials at all of the school sites and have begun the purchasing process to ensure that materials are delivered to school sites in a timely manner. We have completed, completely finished, LPAC summative testing and are in the final days of cast testing for our third through eighth grade students, which will conclude um, by May 21st. Our physical fitness testing is completed for all fifth grade students, and eighth grade students are currently in the process of conducting makeups. Business services, special services, student services, and ed services are continuing our collaboration around the LCAP annual update. We're working closely with the school sites to support their development of their school site plans. As Dr. Kemp mentioned, this Saturday will be our first annual district STEM fair, led by the efforts of Dr. Sheila Crotz and Ms. Colleen Hennessy. Students will showcase their STEM projects between 10.30 and 11.30, followed by awards at 11.30. I appreciate if everyone comes out and sees um, all the work that our students have put into this and all the efforts from our dedicated staff members. Thank you, and that's my update. Good evening, board members and Dr. Kim, and of course the educational community. Uh, for business services, it's going to be a very, very brief report because the main um, topic that has been worked on in business services is the budget development and making sure that we have as much information, current information from every source that we can and um, inputting it into what we <clears throat> will be bringing to the board uh, at a public hearing in June and then the final adoption at the end of June. Um, the food services is working very diligently, getting ready for the uh, summer seamless program, um, making sure that we are feeding the um, individuals in, in and around uh, Bel Air. Um, we are working with uh, special education with their ESY program that was going to be held in Romanwood, and of course with the Ed Services with the other uh, special uh, me, summer programs that they're having. Um, coordinating, we're still very busy with our maintenance operations and transportation. There's a lot going on in that regard. Um, too many to actually name each and everything that has happened. Um, and we're just very, really busy. Um, the CBOC, the Citizens uh, Bond Oversight Committee, is going to have their second meeting. We did have it scheduled for the 22nd, and then the board um, had a, put a regular board meeting on that date, so we had to change it so it is going to be on May 29th and um, it will be at the district office. Uh, the agendas will go out for that soon as well as being publicly noticed um, at the meeting. Um, I think we have finalized what we are going to have as far as the uh, dates for the future uh, quarterly meetings and um, we've just been in the process of getting all the uh, people returning uh, and accepting the, the invites. Um, but those, again, will also be posted on the website. Um, and that's about it for right now. Good evening, President Martinez, trustees, Dr. Kemp. Um, in special education services, we're working to get everything wrapped up before the end of the year. This includes preparation for articulation meetings for students who are at transition grade levels, um, kinder to, or pre-K to kinder, fifth to sixth, and eighth to ninth. Um, in preparation for next year, we've been interviewing special education teachers, and I'm very excited about some of the candidates we've seen so far. 
Uh, we're going through the root cause analysis process for our performance indicator review as part of our LCAP annual update, and we'll be finalizing our PIR plan at the end of next month. In student services, as Dr. Kent mentioned, the interdistrict lottery was held and letters went out to families notifying them of their results. We've been working closely with Ed Services, Business Services, and our data tech to finalize our CRDC report, align our district forms with eliminate entry fields, and plan for a professional development series next year that will include office managers and parent liaisons. We're looking forward to continuing our work in both departments and having the summer to plan ways to enhance our support to staff and families. The, um, yes, when is the, I'm sorry, you said you mentioned the workshops, when, when is the date? The parent workshops? Right, because, wait, is when is the parent help, help the parents workshop? It, uh, it was moved to June 1st. Okay, okay, and where are we going to be hosting that? Bel Air. Trustee Blanco and myself were in the committee, as you know, for the Children's Day 2019. Um, I just have to say, she did a wonderful job, fantastic. This was her 11th year putting this on. It was our year. Okay. The district's 11th year. The district's 11th year putting this on. It was a fabulous event. For Children's Day 2020, um, it looks like the, we actually received a lot of help this year from many community members. But for, um, in addition to the help that we received from the many community members out there serving, um, the, the San Bruno Education Foundation also wants to assist us with planning the Children's Day 2020. So Trustee Blanco and myself met with Brian last week and discussed some ideas. So I just wanted to report out on that. I don't know if Trustee Blanco, Blanco if you have anything to add to that? I just wanted to say I, um, I'm just grateful for the community. I know next month we'll be giving a full report. I'll have a presentation for everyone um, with some beautiful pictures of our family that attended on April um, 27th. But um, it, it's just it's you know it's just a labor of love, and it's grown so big through the years. And sometimes I can't quite remember the year 2014. I don't forget what year that was, but. Um, but I just, I just think I'm, I'm just grateful that the board continues to support that in the district and has embraced continuing this program um, here in our city. So um, I need just more information to come. And the fact that the SBF wants to partner with the school district in making it bigger and better, I am um, looking forward to seeing what it looks like in 2020.
for the subsequent school year. And so this annual report is required to be filed by every school district in California uh, through the Commission on Teacher Credentialing in Sacramento. It's called a declaration for each of the qualified educators. And so this is the state identifying positions for which the district may have an insufficient number of certificated persons meeting its specified employment criteria. And states that a clinically prepared teacher is not available, the district shall make reasonable efforts to recruit for an individual in the following order. One, that the candidate is, is scheduled to complete the initial preparation requirements within six months, or that the candidate who qualifies and agrees to participate in an internship program in the region of the school district. Uh, sometimes we do this, and in fact, this year, we do have an individual who's, uh, who's, uh, who is in this process right now. So if a student suitable individual who meets the above criteria are not found, then the district may request approval for the placement of the individual on an emergency permit. And so those are the, that basically is giving CPC a heads up on how many emergency permits they can expect for the subsequent year. Do the chair so moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 So there was, we already had uh, some uh, comment about the fact that this is on discussion on the action. I'd like to make a little explanation there too. The way this was brought up in the last uh, meeting, um, you can, uh, really the way it came down to how it would be presented in this meeting, it wasn't really clear to me exactly what the words were, but the manner was a real uh, concern for me. Is, uh, I, the manner in which this came up was a concern. Um, if the only question involved was, is this for action or not for action? This is, it's missing the point of the, um, the way the board has handled itself and and our commitments to working together. I was trying to take a look to see where, um, you know, you can get down to things of, of bylaws and rules and so forth, but just coming back to the handbook, I was thinking, well, what, is there something in there that would give guidance? And it didn't have to get down far into um, the questions of, um, you know, even what, what does the board commit to and stand for with each other? So it didn't get down even into the um, exacting rules, but came into exactly our definition, our statement and commitment and under unity of purpose, which said that the San Bruno Park School District governance team, unity of purpose, we want to build trust and move the district forward. We want to become an effective team. We want to understand our collective responsibilities. We want to be a team with common focus so they're not a distraction to the district or community, but a catalyst for the focused efforts of employees. We want the community to be able to see <coughs> the evidence of this focused direction. We want to be partners with the staff in positive change. We want to oversee the putting together of a first-rate program and first-rate facilities, ensuring that we continue to improve, never resting on our goals. We want to perpetuate a legacy of positive culture as people come and go. Um, I, I think I'm gonna say that, that my feeling was that the context in which this came up at the April meeting did not comport with our commitment to those kinds of standards. So I think tonight we do have this on for discussion. If the board would wish to have this come back um, for action later, then I'll take direction from the board to do that. Um, I would love to see that perhaps we do that at the June meeting, if, if that's the direction. But what I would like to do is um, invite the board members each to um, uh, make a statement as far as this goes, and actually to kind of control it a bit, because we've had some, um, some trouble with um, respecting each other's opinions and um, carrying, carrying 
questions forward respectfully in a way that, that we would expect them when we when we plan to come to meetings. You know, we don't we don't look for things to, to go off the rails, right? So I think what I'd like to do is, is invite the board in the order um, that we take those to first have board members if they would choose to make a statement. Um, after that, um, I'd like if there is any I don't know if there are any comments from the comment on this, invite that to come through. And then pass run through one more time and let board members build upon the statements that they heard um, up to that point and give direction on what one of the things that I would say um, for me, this is I it's un, unprecedented in my experience that we would um, that a district would take this action. But I think also what I would take from it too is that I would take direction in wanting to serve the board as it wishes to be served. Not the needs of uh, just individuals. I would like to meet the needs of individuals, but also to, to work on the board's behalf in, in putting together um, productive meetings. So anyway, I would look to, um, to take that kind of direction and I would look forward to continuing this. But if the board was to bring it back, I'd be happy to bring it back. And I, we will come up with another process for deliberation at that time need be. But um, yeah, so anyway, that's, I think that's a fair way at least to introduce the item. Yeah. Mr. Chair, um, I actually like to ask the board for us not to have discussion at this time because um, we did give the board present direction on when and where on the agenda to place this item. So I would like to move this topic to the, you said June, I'm fine with June, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I'd like to. But um, I'd like that. for us just to have this discussion under action item at the next meeting. And why does it have to go? Why, why are you asking for it to go to June's meeting? Okay, so again, um, this is properly agendized for tonight. We are able to discuss this, and I'm asking this to consider this as But my original request was to put a discussion and slash action, and the majority of the board approved. So we were already, Kevin, you already given direction on where to place this mm -hmm. on the agenda. Okay. If you don't believe me, you can watch the video. You can watch the recording. Well, here, let me take the, a quick second. I've heard a couple times about the video, and again, I'll just come back to just one statement to get into this. If the takeaway from that meeting was, this is what we've got to do, the way the manner that the meeting developed and went through was shameful, in my opinion. I think it was one of the worst meetings I've ever attended, much less been a party to. And I, and I would take a certain responsibility for the fact that, that certain actions should have been precluded. If we're going to stop with the, motion, the notion that this is where we end. And I can even see the, the hectoring that went on at board members. Do this, do this. Fine, that, okay, you can go down to, you know, that, that's how that would look on the transcript, perhaps. I don't even know that that's the case. However, be that as it may, I would say that this governing board is having difficulty with its primary um, governance role and it's being an example for uh, the district, particularly in the board's collective leadership role. So I'm going to ask again that we, that the board members provide direction going forward with this. If it needs to come back, we'll come back. But look for direction from the board and ask to so continue. If you would like to pass, well, you by you not placing it under action item at tonight's meeting, you violated yourself, one of our board bylaws. We just had finished passing the fact that if one board member would like to have an agenda item on the agenda, that it would take two. But at this meeting, it, there was not just two, Kevin, there was three board members that agreed to have it as action. Again. So, 
And that's one of the reasons why I'm asking for you to step down for this to be brought before the board under an action item so that Terry and Andy would like to step up as our moving forward as our board president. So that's why I'm asking the board for us just to have this properly and um, uh, agendize the June's meeting so as it was originally requested by the majority of the board at the April 10th meeting. And I'm, I've described, I think I gave an, an apt enough description of the board. So I'd like to go, if, if nobody would like to speak, then we'll just let it pass. I'll take that as you don't want to speak to us. Um, next would be, staff, and still ask financial questions, but respect staff. 
We should respect each other. It's really about the future. I mean, we talk about land use issues. These are the real issues, the stuff we should be talking about. Thank you. Thank you. I agree in terms of um, over nine years I've been on this board, there have been many times there have been issues that have come up. And the April 10th meeting was an example where one of your board member went after multiple people during the course of the meeting. And she's sitting at the very end, Ms. Blanco. She did it with John, John Daly. She did it with Wendy Richards to the point that exasperation, you know what you saw in the video. And so it reached at multiple levels. Somebody was interrupting the president multiple times, if you look at the video, on multiple occasions. And it started with her. So when I said during the break that to uh, Ms. Blanco, it was during the break because of frustration, she was antagonizing, causing harm to others in the community. And that was not acceptable. The vote that went on with, in terms of the personnel report, that's never occurred, that it didn't pull off, that it was shrouded by all this stuff about the schedules and everything else, but there was an underlying issue that was not being revealed to the public. And that is, there was really, this was a personal issue between the president of the SBA and John David. It was a, it, it, it is, it's not true. Just, whatever, you can shake your head, you can do whatever you want, but there were, there were two board members, or three, that got 15 emails, but we only got two or three on this issue. And so when I said that comment, I meant it for the whole board. It was not directed to one particular board member when I made it. It was, it was, no, it was, no, it was not. Heard it. Uh, everyone heard it. Well, it was not, I, I'm pleased I have. I have the floor. So I said to the entire board, because never has been manipulated that issue before that I've seen. But you only said it to me. I did not say to you. I was looking, I was sitting at this direction, and I did. You, I know what I said, and I know what I did, and why I did it. Because there's underlying issues that people were being manipulated by board members would give you information. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's your privilege. And that seeing all the other process and then having Wendy going up every meeting about this credit card statement and everything else and victimizing her because you couldn't get it. And this is a problem where we've lost two superintendents because of Ms. Jennifer Blanco. She's working on the third. This, I'm just saying, this is a one. So when you talk about the chair, I'm sorry, you might have to stop me now. So the chair. The, the issue is really basically getting to this whole point about providing honesty and integrity and not having all these things going behind closed doors and making, uh, basically creating a system or an atmosphere of mistrust starting before the board meetings, whether it involves other community groups that have various interests in this process and how they're trying to manipulate certain board members. And that is what, whether you, you, you look, this is what I've seen. I'm a pathologist. I see diseases and things that go on. And this is not, this is not new, okay? I want these board meetings to be looking at the goal of making sure that all children meet the standards that the state. This is a critical issue. Not these adult issues that are creeping into it by other people and other groups. People can shake all their heads they want, but that is the problem that we have on school boards. It becomes politicized and not addressing the needs of those children. Really address them and look at the issues that are critical to this. And so this becomes important that if you have signed this government's handbook and you're not practicing it, then that is a problem because no government's team will be functional in this state. Of matter. And so moving forward, reorganization, 
you really have to look deep inside you and say what the real issues are and how one person can really cause mayhem at multiple levels. Thank you. the video from the last meeting, and Henry, boy, you're really doing revisionist history here because you told Jennifer to shut up, and that was so disrespectful, and maybe she should have responded the same back to you, but boy, oh boy, were you disrespectful, and you're talking about people like infiltrating, like the Illuminati going on here. At one meeting, you brought up San Bruno Mal is influencing people on this board. San Bruno Mal, all it is, it's a website. That's all it is. It's a bunch of residents who want the better for their community. We're interested in our children. We volunteer in the community. We go to city council meetings. We have a vested interest that everybody does well. And I don't see you representing that at all. And Jennifer, I apologize for what he has said to you tonight. Thank you. Good evening, board of trustees, administration. Um, I have not once ever caught up at one of these meetings and lost my temper and screamed at don't do it in my classroom for 28 five rules, and I won't do it here. SBA's first priority is for the learning environment, and we support the teachers. I have had disagreements with Dr. Clifford. I've had disagreements with Dr. Rogers. I've had disagreements with Dr. Kemp. I've had disagreements with Trustee Mason. I've had disagreements with Trustee Blanco, and I've had disagreements with Trustee Chavez, and I've had disagreements with Mr. Martinez, and with you. And not once have I ever yelled, shut up. And this last week, I had a very busy week. I met with the county superintendent, Nancy McGee, and I also participated at the, uh, with Mr. Martinez at the portrait of a graduate where we worked on moving forward with the district, looking at what it will take to move this district forward in a positive manner. A few weeks ago, I presented to the board the pay scales that show we were at the bottom in almost every category. And I didn't rant or rave, I said I wanted to work collaboratively with the board to make that happen. And that was also the advice that Dr. McGee gave me when we visited her last week. Work collaboratively with the administration and with the board. The only way I feel we can do that is by reorganizing the board so that the community, the teachers, the staff have faith that whether I disagree with Mr. Mason vote or Trustee Chavez's vote, that we move forward and there's still a line of the communication. Right now, there is not a line of communication with some of the board members. Thank you. Suggest 
that you are collectively a model board of trustees that all boards should seek to emulate. Add to that a district over which you govern that has recently garnered overwhelming community support of a bond measure to support the Sobeys transformation, has attracted hundreds of thousands of dollars in grant funding to support educational transformation, received an outstanding upgrade from Moody's on bond ratings attributed to stability and management's ability to rapidly turn around its financial position, and recently concluded the convocation of educators and community partners around the portrait of a graduate work. Putting all that on paper, this district would also appear to be a model that other districts would be looking to for advice on how to do better. Yet sadly, between these two models, there exists a dark chasm of hostility and a lack of trust, respect, and human kindness that is eroding the foundation of the values, mission, and vision of San Bruno Park School District. Reorganization of the board is not the topic that should be under discussion this evening. Regaining your moral compass as a board is what should be at the forefront of your conversation. You have each signed off on a governance handbook to uphold a set of governance norms that are blatantly being violated and have been for some time violated in discourse among yourselves and in how some of you treat staff and even members of the public. A toxic culture has seeped into the organization Toxicity infects the health of the district, exactly the opposite of the governance rules the board agreed to uphold. Until you discuss among yourselves how to regroup and consistently adhere to the norms that should be governing your actions and proceedings, what should be a model board and a model district is on the brink of imploding. Reorganizing is not the answer. Recommitting to each other and to our community is the answer. Thank you. Um, so again, I'd like to invite And also from that, I would just like to know from you what, what you'd like to do in terms of um, moving forward with uh, this item. To the chair. Um, I just spoke so fast that my hand didn't work right fast enough to combat everything you just said. But um, I will start by saying that the reason why I am requesting to recall Kevin Martinez as our board president is for, um, first of all, I find you, Kevin, to have um, lack the leadership that you need to be our, to serve as our board president. Um, I find you to uh, blatantly disregard your fellow colleagues here on the board. And I just find you to be very disrespectful towards your colleagues here on the board. Um, and the fact that I find that Kevin has a lack of, lack of leadership here to serve as our board president. We have, as in the beginning of the meeting, he introduced Gina Beltrama, who's here um, uh, serving as, I'm assuming, to his, as his advice, advice or mentor. I don't know, honestly, why we were not shared with why she's here, but I do find the fact that we are, um, I find her presence here and her attendance at our meetings um, just an unnecessary expense to the district because of Kevin's lack of leadership serving as our board president. I find it very detrimental um, and that he's serving as our board president and we do need to reorganize ourselves. Um, a reorganization of a governance team does happen. As I mentioned at the meeting, at the April 10th meeting, I did contact CSBA and this does happen. There are situations that boards do need to reorganize themselves mid-year. I do feel that if either one of my colleagues, uh, Terry or Andy, would like to serve 
as our board president, I do feel that there would be, um, uh, that we would trust, that there'd be some level of trust amongst the, the board members here. So um, I did also email uh, Kevin and Stella requesting certain information on how much Gina Beltran's attendance is costing the district. The other question I had was, how many meetings is she going to be attending at these meetings? And I do remember when I did call her out at the meeting on the 24th, because she was an unfamiliar face and I do have history of calling people out, welcoming, out of, welcoming them to our board meeting. Stella, neither you, Kevin, informed us that she was going to be at the meeting. And the fact that Gina Beltramo did not even introduce herself at the meeting, I don't know why that was. Um, it's fine, I mean, I don't mind having our, our, our attorneys present, but with past history, we've had our board, we've had our county, we've had our attorneys introduce themselves to the board at the beginning of the meeting, but this did not happen. So you want to talk about trust, there's most definitely not trust on this board, and that's why we need either Terry to step up or Andy to step up. When I present things to the, to the board here and to the community, believe me, I don't pull it just from anywhere. I do my research, I call the people I need to call, and I come here empowered with the information and, um, and to share with the knowledge that I learned through my research and calling either CSK or CDE, and I share it with my colleagues. So I'm not making this stuff up as I'm coming, as I'm going along. So I, I'm not even gonna address all of your accusations, Henry, because I find it a waste of my time. And I appreciate you all, you know, being here and telling me it's not worth it, and you're right, it's not. Um, but, um, and then Nancy Krause, you mentioned the moral compass. Uh, I, I agree with you, I think we do need to, uh, come back to that and really see what that's going to look like moving forward, but we need to do that reorganizing ourselves. And we do need another different, we need a different board president. So again, I'm going to ask again to table it for the next meeting. Andy just mentioned he's not present at the 22nd meeting, neither June 12th. So Andy, if you can please share with the board of what meeting, which meeting you're gonna be present, so we can properly put this as the majority of the board agendized it and we gave our board present direction and it fell upon deaf ears. And I still would like to know, so your answer going back to my questions to Henry, and, um, I'm sorry, ugh, not Henry, but to Kevin and to um, Stella, was I did not get answers regarding the cost that she is occurring, the, the district, and how many meetings is she planning on attending. The response I did receive was, that we did adopt their contract at some meeting, but that's not the information I asked for. So if you could still please provide that to me, I'd be really, uh, I, I'd be happy to see that information so I can do my own account and I guess I'd have to figure it out because you didn't answer my question. So if you can, so if you can please, um, and because yeah, um, we need to, we need to okay. take this to a vote. Well, can you share with us? Wait one second, yeah. I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm asking him. Yeah. So if you can't please. So I can't make June 12th, but okay. I'll go with these other dates. But you already mentioned you can't make 22nd. I may be able to make it. Okay, so I can make it. Okay. Yeah. Um, the motion. And for okay. the chair, Kevin, um, in speaking with, with CSBA, okay. this action can also be taken at a special board meeting. board if we do have 
the board reorganization on a future agenda as, as an action item. I think what uh, Nancy Krause has provided in terms of reconnecting and addressing that issue uh, is more important than reorganization because no matter who the president is, that if there's any disagreement with that with another board member, they'll take issue and the same process will occur in different ways. So I'm favored no reorganization. And honestly, it can't get any worse than it was on April 10th, so I'm all for trying something out. Good chair, I'm definitely with Terry on this one. I think things de escalate, and I am for reorganization. And I think we should focus on that. We'll have to look at the schedule and look at these future dates. I think we need to use the calendar. I think so. Yeah, it's um, can you zoom in the way Henry does at our meetings? No. If you can't be there, or even to let them call in. Maybe 26. Another level too, where I think it's um, actions at the board table, but also otherwise um, at other times within the district has been disruptive of the normal operations and what employees of the district um, have a right to expect as a respectful environment. I think that's been on display. It was, I believe, at the April 10th meeting and before. It was actually, I believe, uh, on display at the last meeting. There was a, a characterization made that, uh, about how corporate um, the settings were. And I, I found it to be absolutely the opposite of what is true. The behavior that was exhibited by the board, you know, kind of board member in that situation, would be uh, unprofessional beyond being able to um, continue with an organization. To be that as it may, to the chair. Yeah, just a moment. Be that as it may, what I see in general is a community that whose school board has um, put risk in where it doesn't belong. And um, I would commit to Whatever, wherever this may come at the next meeting is, is fine, but I would say that, that that's, that's my take. To the chair, Kevin, exactly why. I believe the topic that is under discussion is governance reorganization. Yes. reorganization. It's not, what you're talking about is not 
an agendized item. So since we have Gina Petron here, and obviously she's been asked here by you and Stella, I believe maybe you might want to ask her, utilize her. Um, Are you making a point for um, to ask her to see if what your uh, your comments is actually relevant to the topic that's on the agenda. Now, if you want to talk about what transpired at the April t um, 10th meeting, I suggest that maybe you may want to um, agendize it, and then we can have a full-on discussion. But those comments, I think, are not relevant to our topic. You might want to ask Ms. Gina. Okay. If not, I can ask her. What I think is, I was responding to, what I would say then is, is that is, the climate in which the reorganization came up was not a healthy environment. And I, that's all I'm saying is that, that that's, and now we're saying if, you, if the board chooses to say that that, that was my responsibility, then um, I, I can accept that. I, um, I, and I would say that in the context of at that time, um, through recesses and things like that, I attempted. If there, if, Again, this, this will come back, well, but I, I wanted to provide my own. And I appreciate that. And, and, and if I could say something, um, <laughs> how do I say this? Um, I guess the videos tell it all. There's the videos on YouTube, and it's linked to the, to the parents' Facebook page. And so parts of it I watched, and I watched the interaction, because I can't, I was sitting where Dr. Sanchez is sitting, our roles were, so every time I come to a meeting, I'm in a different spot where they keep switching to it's fine with me. I just look at my name plate and I sit down. Um, <laughs> So I just wanted to say that um, whether Henry meant you meeting everybody, I was the only person that heard that because he leaned to his left and he said, you screwed up. And the video, the video shows him leaning towards me and then I say, I guess the microphone picked me up, picked up, I said, are you talking to me? And I'm not Italian, but at that moment I sounded Italian, are you talking to me? I said, are you talking to me? And then he said, you just destroyed everything. Now whether it was, I took that as being directed towards me, so I repeated that in the, mic in the microphone because I was actually shocked that he would say that to me. Somebody in the audience said, what did he say? So I said, at the time that I said that, the video shows you putting up your hands to silence me. I think a, a, a president should look out for the board members and say, that's inappropriate. You you well, you were silencing me because I was the only one talking when you did this. So what, I would say, watch video three, the last five minutes. That was my time. Actually, it's video two, the last five minutes, sorry. For the check, I think I a comment here. Um, as I shared earlier, it, you know, we, we can go through the Robert Rules of Order and, and follow governance procedures to a T, but I really think the decisions we make are really what affect people, right? I mean, down to land use, to, to curriculum, to broader community based decision making. And we can talk about this, sounds like a an action item for, um, to discuss. Uh, and take action on, right? That's what the board consensus says. Yeah, right. But I mean, honestly, it's not my favorite subject. I'd rather talk about stuff that's much more interesting, education, property, land use, thoughtful development. I could go on, but thanks, student achievement, thanks. Okay, so I think we're, moving on to item H1, minutes of April. Uh, excuse me. Uh, this consent agenda is full. Is there any items? For the chair, H. H1, H2, uh, 5. Through chair, make a motion to uh, pass the rest of the remaining part of the agenda. I'll second that. Okay, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that's um, the balance of consent agenda is um, numbers three, four, six, and seven. So um, item H1 is uh, minutes of April 10th, 2019, regular board meeting. I reviewed the minutes from April 10th meeting, and it's just, we can't, obviously we can't reiterate four hours of YouTube videos, but I do just think in general, um, a lot is left out 
of, of the minutes, and I, I think something needs to be said in there um, as far as um, the board interaction, the lack of respect towards one another. I'm not saying that we should put in there quotes what was said to me, what was said to this trustee. I just think somewhere, if you read the minutes, it looks like we just had a regular meeting. We might have disagreed with one or two things, but um, I, I think we, we can, I don't know, I just don't feel comfortable with, with the way the minutes are currently. I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying we should put in everything that's said, because that's, you can't put four hours of a meeting into the minutes, but when I read the minutes, I don't, if you read the minutes, you wouldn't even understand why we have a, have, have a council here, but we have council here because of what happened on April 10th. Thank you. Through the chair. Yeah. So, to clarify, am I going to There's a section about the review of the warrants. Because I, it says here that I stayed the budget is about $31 million a year. You know, I, I, that's why I mentioned we shouldn't focus too much on $14,000 or $10,000. But the next sentence says that I also said that Ms. Richards stated that um, she would put copies of the statements in the packet for the board and that this needs to be addressed. And the next sentence says Ms. Richards states she felt bullied by the board member. So I take that that. Since that's the next sentence, it makes it sound like I'm, I'm the one bullying Ms. Richard, which I, which I disagree with that. Terry, you don't want your comment? I'm done. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> so, in regards to the review of the warrants, uh, <coughs> when, I check one order. We have each one that we have to. I don't know if pulled it out. I haven't said anything about it. But we're talking about the minutes. I'm talking about the minutes. The minutes. Um, so, in under review warrants, it says there that Ms. Blanco stated she would like to see copies of credit card statements of each meeting. I don't recall. I said I would like to. I had in previous previous meetings had shared with the board, with the community, that if we're going to truly be transparent with our public dollars and the way that this district is utilizing that district credit card, that the credit card has to be, need to be included with the warrants in the board packet. That's what I've said. So I would I am requesting to have these minutes amended and brought back at the next meeting so that I can see in black and white that these amendments were actually made. The other thing here it says, Ms. Richard stated she felt bullied by board members. Um, and an argument ensued and Ms. Richard stated she had enough and left the meeting. I believe she said a little bit more than that. She also made a public comment that she quit and that should be reflected in the minutes. So I'm requesting for this to come back with the necessary changes. And then on number 11, it says out of town overnight field trip request to Narita, Japan. When Dr. Kent gave her report about all the work that our students are doing to raise money and look for scholarships so they can afford their trip, I had asked Stella, well, how come, why aren't you not fundraising? I'd like to also have that reflected in there, that you had Trustee Blanco ask the superintendent 
about fundraising for her trip? Chair, I do know, um, uh, well, I, I actually asked this at the, well, no, I'll hold up to 24th, that's the 24th and 6th. I called that, I, I, I called that one out too. Okay, so, well, on, so you're saying that. My next comment is actually, my comment I'm about to make actually is for the next agenda, agenda, um, in You're saying that. H2 is all right, is that? No, no, I called, I pulled that one out too. No, there's some discrepancy in that one too. So I'm asking you to clarify. I'm getting there. I further don't expect that was part of the direction given by the board. So 
I would, yeah, so. Mr. Chair, I agree with you. I was there as well. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's good. Uh, I think, is that, is that it for, um, move on to, uh, H2 will come back, move on to H5, move on to H5. So with H5, um, let me give everyone here some history on the request and the reason why we need to have the copy of statements or the credit card statements. Uh, we preach transparency. Uh, I see it as that these are public dollars, um, just like how all the expenditures are listed in the warrants. I don't see the, the district credit card being any different and it needs to be presented to the community. That's the reason why April 10th meeting got out of hand because at a previous meeting, uh, the CBO did mention that she was going to start including it in the board packet. So when I brought it back up for discussion again and asked why it wasn't, um, she stated that she just said that she was going to put it in just so we could keep the meeting moving along. So I found that to be very dishonest, and um, especially to a board member who is accountable to the voters. We are entrusted to do right by our community. We are here for the community, by the community. Um, so I want to say again that we need to have the copies of the credit card statement in the agenda under warrants to accompany the list of warrants that we already have, that's already in the agenda. Um, Stella has mentioned in previous meetings that if the community wants to go take a look at the credit card statements and all of the backup information, that they are free to do so. But it was brought to our my, our my attention today that we did have a community member that went in to request this information, but this person was turned away with information that they needed to submit documentation and that within 10 days regarding um, to uh, adhere to the Public Records um, Act, which is fine. But I just feel that our superintendent has made it seem so easy to go in and request this information. If this, if this was the original intention of our superintendent, then I feel that she should have stated that in previous meetings when welcoming the, the community to come, uh, to come to the district office and review this information. Um, I know, Andy, you have mentioned that you don't want to cause any more work to district staff regarding the credit card statement. I have two copies with me tonight. This is March 2019. I actually went because I was interested to see um, what the process of a community member would go through in doing their own level of research. Um, doesn't take much time. I, tr I tr truly recommend the community to do so. Um, just make sure you have to submit to the superintendent and the CBO that you're, re you're requesting the information. And within 10 days, they need to respond to you when the information is ready for you. So I'm gonna pass this on to Andy and to my colleagues who may have not seen the credit card statement. Um, the, num the account number is redacted, so no need to worry about taking the account number down. But this is all that I request that we need to um, have included in the board packet. Um, because I know Andy had shared concerns that it's going to be so much work, but it's okay. not just four pages. Okay, so let's... I'm repeating what Andy's concerns okay. were. You've already... Okay. Yes, and now it's I'm, time to move on. So I'm, gonna, I'm passing that along to, to you guys to see that, in fact, it's not... Okay, what, here's how we'll do this. To, to, we'll to have see, this come back to the I'm, sh I'm, I'm sharing with you guys that I know you guys have not gone and done the level of research that okay. I have. So Again. I'm just sharing with, with, with you guys and now I'm, that I'm, it's I'm not, talking about I'm sorry, wait, wait, hold on. 
that it's Finish not that. going to be a lot of work on district staff. Already said that, and now what I'm saying is that we will put this on. This is not the warrants are the checks that are issued. You want the backup information, which is I know. I had a very. Would you please not interrupt? No, me. I don't want you to. Would you misunderstand please not interrupt me. Please not but interrupt you're, me. You're, you're, you're what not, I'm saying. You're not is, understanding. I am understanding, but you're not letting okay, me speak. So, so what is it you're saying? So what I will say is the the board has not, prior to this, given direction that it wants original documents from the district brought forward to this item in the way that you've consistently advocated for it. I understand that you, can, that you sincerely believe this yourself, but I've not seen the board yet take action or provide consistent consensus that the, the staff should make this what they do. So what I'm going to suggest is that we just bring this forward with as an agenda item on whether to proceed with this practice in the future, and we'll do it the way it should be handled when there's a persistent question like this coming forward. If you well, can, Kevin, if so you felt saying, so strongly as you do, then maybe you should have put that as an agenda item prior, but you have again, not. Again, what I have said is the board has All not I'm saying, given but, direction but, okay, to Okay, Kevin, let me ask you this, but why does it take for board for us to take action on this when these are public dollars and our community has a right to see Again, our expenditures. That's not, that's not on the agenda now. But why but why is it that your your hesitation is that you're trying to stop a board member from gathering more information for to support to supply this information to the so, community? What, I'm what is it with you that you don't want it in there? No, I'm not saying I don't. And so okay. we're going to proceed this way. So, going to go so you're going to agendize yes. an action item or is it going to be under discussion? It'll be, an, it'll be an action item for the board to decide whether original documents, they're already providing reports, which is the level of uh, governance action to the board and they, it's all governed within their own accountability. So, but it's we not. Move forward. It, so it's, what I'm it's saying, not. It's not listed as a credit card statement. What it's saying, not so listed, we'll Kevin. We'll discuss it together. Kevin, why don't you look at what we have in the warrants and compare it to the credit card statement? Again, as long we'll do as, that meeting. We'll as do long that as, meeting. if we need to, Jennifer, we need to move on. I don't understand why why you hesitate. I don't I'm understand. Not, yes, 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 you are. Okay, so through the chair, so let me just say a couple of comments. So when you say original documents, you just made a photocopy of. Is that what you mean? Those are original. This is those are not original documents. But what you mean is those? It's, just a, it's a copy of the okay. original statement, and this so, is what the community is going to see when they when submit they request, their, okay, their I understand. request. I understand. Yeah, and there are the work of the district is is to produce. Documents such as these in all manners of operations. So, if the board, I, I don't know what the distinction is with this particular one. However, I'm just, I'm, this is not the time to ask for the board. I'm trying to back. And you're the side. For the chair. Thanks, Kevin. Um, yes, it, it is public money. I understand high level politics here. It, if it's brought back and we discuss it and we they can make a an action, and we request, hey, it's not much more work, let's dig into it. Well, we'll just, that's, that's the point of it. Okay, sounds good. I'd like to make one clarification when it does come back, that the process in which people are allowed to use the credit card, what the process involves. In other words, the accountability that's already built into this is included. Okay, yes, yeah, so that'll give a context, and I think if we could actually even include, I think it was reference to those um, accountability that comes through the, the county office's oversight as well. Summarize that. Thank you. So, um, if we could take action on item H5. 
for the review. I believe the statement would be that the warrants have been reviewed. So moved to the chair. A second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. It passes forward. Uh, communications from the Board of Education, item I. <laughs> To the chair. When Henry was board president, uh, he agreed with Stella that she should sit amongst and in between board members. When I became board president, I had a conversation with her that I felt that that scene arrangement wasn't appropriate because of the message it sent to the community. The superintendent is hired by the board. The superintendent is not an elected official. The board president, past practice, always sits next to the superintendent at meetings. When you walk into the district office, I don't know how many of you noticed this, but she is right smack dab in the middle with the board members surrounding her. And I have a concern with that because of the message that it's sending the community that the superintendent is an elected official and is a board member. So I am asking the superintendent that if she wants to picture herself in the district office and the community walks in, that's fine, I'm okay with it. But I would have preferred that it to be placed on the other wall. It sends the bad message to the community. So I'm asking for Stella to please remove her picture and place it opposite to the wall that has all the board members on it. It sends the wrong message. I understand that the superintendent is part of the government's team, but the superintendent is not an elected official. So why not just label the government's team? No, because Stella's only been here not even two years. Dr. Hutt was here at 13, and prior to that, that was Donna Elder. I don't recall how long she was here. And then Dr. Dawn was here before Dr. Elder. None of those superintendents ever had a picture up on that wall. But if Stella, being the superintendent that she is, wants a picture, I'm fine with that. But I would prefer, because of the message it sends to the public and to the community, to the voters, that her picture be placed across from the board. It's a nice picture, by the way, Stella, but I would prefer that it be put across from the wall of the board. I don't know, so, so, I mean, I think it's not Sorry, I'm sorry, to crack up here. But um, this is just pictures, right? This is um, so, so this is not on the agenda. So okay. Yeah, that's true. But, yeah. Stop where it is. Well, see, it's like, I actually don't want my picture up, so you can take mine down too. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying we need to take action on this too? Yes. Why? Why? None of the previous trust uh, superintendents have ever had their picture up there with the board. Well, I really don't care what other districts do, but I think that still is, it sends the wrong message to the, it sends the wrong message to the board. Carrie, you stole my question. I just want to see how this is commonly done and then it's adopted. I know you want it to go forward. 
would like this to come back. No, I think we should put, put some staff can figure this out where the pictures go. I don't, I don't think. Let's not forget about putting that. So let's. But I want mine down. Are they like, <laughs> Like, I don't. I don't want to make a joke. Yeah, this. Oh, it's so I'm asking. You want, you're asking, asking to drop it. Let's drop it. You're okay with still this picture behind? Yeah. Well, it's not. It's not. You guys just rearrange the pictures. I mean, do we? We don't have one. Yeah. Okay. No, so it's not going to drop it. That's the takeaway from this. Any other questions? Word on it. I am Jay, future business. So just to. Yes. I did want to, uh, at the last board meeting, we didn't get it on your future business for tonight, but we did have a uh, school, the California Schools and Local Community Spending Act of 2018, the schools and Communities First Federation. So we'll be bringing it back uh, later okay. in the couple months. <laughs> So, our chair, I would like to invite the gentleman uh, who wasn't asked to come at the previous meeting when uh, questions came up. Okay, um, about the school community side, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. I think that was a missed opportunity the first time in front of all so. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, so we have a future. Um, school sorry, any other agenda items? Uh, children's Day and PK. And when? So we have a future schedule for the June 15th, the June 15th, and Children's Day. I think that we just discussed children's free and also June 12th. Okay, our future uh, meeting dates are Saturday, May 11th. Uh, at the Engwall site at 9 in the morning. Uh, then I think the plan is to reconvene at the district office. Uh, and that's uh, set for 10 o'clock, I believe. Uh, Wednesday, May 22nd, regular board meeting at Allen School uh, at 7 p.m. On um, June 12th, regular meeting at Parkside Hill School at 7. And Wednesday, June 26th, regular meeting at, at Allen School at just to reiterate, June 12th, I won't be here. Thanks. Okay, I just wanted to comment that I won't be able to attend the May 11th um, special study session. And then, okay, I, have, I, have a, I have a request. Um, for the May 11th meeting and the May 22nd and the June 26th, can we put that on the, on the district's um, calendar or board meetings? Because there's a nice list of the next 20 meetings, but these, these three are not included. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your turn. Thank you. Thank you.